this is AndyTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to wind the bobbin according to Singer in the correct and complete way. And I'm saying complete with emphasis because I did an earlier uh, video on this model, which is the model 457 Stylist from Singer. Singer model 457 stylist. And I did uh, one of my usual combo um, videos. This is how you wind the bobbin. Um, this is how you thread the needle. This is how you bring up the bobbin thread, etc. That was quite a while back. Um, but I got called out on it recently for giving incorrect and false information. And I look I looked at the video and I said okay uh, it's incomplete and I do want to apologize for that so I'm going to shoot this video uh, with the proper and complete way I like to keep my uh, viewers happy <laughs> okay so um, the this is a very, you know, this is a 1969, 1970 model. But like most Singer models going back an awful long time, when you want to wind the bobbin on the machine, Singer suggests that you, you loosen the uh, clamp here to uh, stop motion to the uh, feed dog and the needle bar and so forth and to, to use this stop motion you hold the outer hand wheel and you turn the stop motion screw or nut or knob uh, towards the front of the machine or counterclockwise and it's about an eighth of a turn is all and what that does is allow the motor to turn the hand wheel, but you've stopped the motion to all the other parts of the machine. And like I said, they, did, they designed that to save wear and tear on the machine. But also, if you happen to have uh, some fabric under the, the needle over here, and and you ran out of bobbin thread or you're checked and you're like wow I'm really low on bobbin thread you could leave all of your fabric under the needle you could leave everything in place right in the middle of a seam stop the motion to it pull out your bobbin or take another bobbin wind it and put it in and do do your next stroke to pull up that thread and continue sewing so there's a double advantage but uh, whether you do that or not when you want to wind a bobbin uh, you can either take your bobbin out or use a different bobbin but you should close the slide plate and that's that's for your safety so we we have the stop motion disengaged at the hand wheel uh, we have our bobbin so we're going to put our spool of thread up here and on this model we have a couple of spools okay and you can use either spool and when you put your uh, thread on there you can put it so the spool feeds off the front or you can put it so the thread feeds off the back. It does not matter. It doesn't matter the feed and it doesn't matter which spool pin. Now, the first place we're going to take this thread is up here to the arm cover thread guide. And you just hold the thread like this put it towards the back of the thread guide and pull it towards you and it pops in to the opening
you can see it passing through here now. So you put the thread to the back and just pull it into that opening. Now the way I did my first video was how Singer had been doing this for years. Then I ran my thread down to the bobbin winder tension disc. And then up to the bobbin winder spindle and the bobbin. But that is incomplete. With these late 60 models, not all of them, but some of them, they changed one of the thread guides up here in the tension assembly and on this top thread opening the upper thread guide for the tension assembly they put a little hook back to the left so you can bring the thread in there behind that hook And now take the thread down to the bobbin winder tension disc. Down to the bobbin winder tension disc and thread it up behind that disc. That disc keeps a nice even tension on the thread on its way to the bobbin winder system. So this was actually a good idea, this machine, 1969-70, you know, they, they added this to come down and over to keep it away from the face plate and some of the controls and the on-off knob. I'm sure that's why they did it. And it was a pretty easy change uh, to that piece. So once you have it routed like this, then... You're going to take the end of the thread and you will uh, put it inside between the sides of the bobbin and out the little hole near to this big spindle hole. And this is a this is a this machine takes a class 66 bobbin. If you're not familiar with those, they have the little curved sides like a little spaceship or saucer versus a class 15 has totally flat side plates okay so when you have your when you have your thread through there you're going to go ahead and bring it up here and put it on the spindle and you notice that I've got the thread going between the side plates and out the hole towards me. I'm going to turn the bobbin to the on position. This bobbin winder by moving this on, it actually moves a lever that has the bobbin winder tire and puts the tire on the back of the hand wheel. So when the hand wheel turns, the spindle will turn and wind the bobbin. Okay, so I've got it turned on. I'm holding the thread coming out the hole and I'm going to wind it, uh, get a few turns on there. Looks great. So then I'm going to snip off this tail that I've been holding on to. Don't need that and don't want to get it wrapped up with everything else. And then you you run your motor at an even speed not not full blast singer says a moderate speed and an even speed and that's your best opportunity to wind the thread evenly on the bobbin because however you wind it it has to unwind that way if you wind it real tight it can drag in your bobbin holder and you start skipping stitches if you wind it too loose you, you it can spin too easily so you want a nice, just even moderate. Don't be in a hurry to wind your bobbin.
it to the point that you want or if you fill it all the way and your auto stop kicks it away from the tire so it quits spinning either way you're done winding it and you can just snip it off here retract your thread and if you're going to use that same thread you can go ahead and start threading the needle and you can pull off your bobbin um, drop it in to your bobbin case pull it up etc I've shown that in the other video and then don't forget to come back and re-engage that stop motion knob or screw or disc so that you can sew and it's just the opposite of of turning it you 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 hold the hand wheel and you turn the knob back clockwise or away from you back that quarter turn and you'll feel it grip on the on the stop motion washer in there you'll feel it clamp down and then that re-engages all the needle bar and the feed dog and the hook so you're ready to sew so that was the difference that's that is what I left out before was going through this new little hook on the upper thread guide upper thread guide of the tension assembly before you go over to the bobbin winder tension disc and again I apologize for that thanks for tuning in and uh, I hope that you're not discouraged from watching my other videos. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>